we're starting. We're starting. I don't care that the timer is not up. I don't care that my green screen isn't up. We're starting. I don't like to wait. I get too excited to draw. How's everybody doing? Let me get my situation set up here. It's like the stream is beginning. The stream is beginning. It's up to me when it begins and it's beginning, okay? like it was 9 a.m. I'm like it's time to start the work day All right what you don't have a job you know what it's like to be dedicated to get some stuff done it's like you just get it going you get it going baby um, ba -ba -ba. let me do a couple things here I want this over here I'm gonna put this I don't need that really and let me uh, just for anyone who's curious since I think people will ask anyway let me put this hand reference I'll use in here that I shot this morning yeah there we go That way everybody knows what's going on. You wanted the timer to end. Look, is this, is this the timer show or is this the Steven show? Because I'm pretty sure it's the Steven show. Put that over here. Could be my little preview boy. Let me turn off my Wi-Fi. This shouldn't crash the stream. No problem. Still going. Just like being only on the hard line. I'm like seeing zero drop frames. Let's put our phones in focus mode. For working, please. And uh, let's sit down to the, de the delicious meal that is drawing. And got my little paper for my hand. And let's go. Look, whatever you need to do to prepare yourself, you go right ahead and you do it. Maybe you need to take a couple deep breaths. Maybe you need to just feel your body for a minute or two. Maybe you need to extremely ceremoniously lay out your pencils on your paper and just like look at all of your materials. Whatever you need to do, you do it. Get yourself feeling peaceful, feeling connected. Try to just be with what you're going to draw. And uh, remember, it's not about it's succeeding or achieving goals or anything like that at least for a little bit just do it just do it if you do it for any reason do it to celebrate the fact that you can do it to celebrate the ecstatic fact of creativity and take a moment to ponder if you're really honoring just how creative you are or how creative you feel you want to be. You know, the world doesn't really ask us to be that creative. You know, most jobs don't ask you to be creative. They ask you to be kind of obedient. Our families don't ask us to be creative. They ask us to fit into their little molds, you know, to be, be what everybody else expects of them. Same thing from our friends from our peers, everything like that. We, we please people the most if we're not creative about who or what we are or what we do. 
that's when people find it easiest to like us. You're just going to keep letting that happen. I'm just going to accept that. You're going to keep doing that to yourself. You're just going to abandon even your creativity about how and why you live your life. Or you're just going to take everybody else's word for it. And trust me, I know it's hard. I know it's hard when you're tied up with friends and family and you've got a spouse and you've got kids, you know. Every little bit of transformation becomes exponentially more difficult as the years go on. So I know it's hard. Young ones out there, enjoy. Enjoy the fact that uh, people have low expectations of you, that they expect you to change. Take advantage of that. Transform violently and often. Not violently. Don't hit people. Hit them with your ease of transformation. May that be your sucker punch to the face. Deba Priya says, just joined. This looks incredible. Thank you. How have you been, Steve? I'm great. You got to confess you're not drawing. You got to draw. And if you're not going to draw, at least have the... Uh, at least have the self-worth to not admit it, you know? Preserve yourself, because now you're in big trouble. And I'm going to send the drawing police after you. Now that you've said it, it's like, oh, God, why'd you say that? Now I have to do my job and send you to drawing jail. There's nothing I can do about that. So we're going to work on this guy for a bit. Just because I want to keep going on him, want to develop him a little bit more. He's going pretty fast. And you guys know I like to start. A longer session with being creative. And then after this, I had an idea for a something I wanted to draw digitally, an idea for a particular beast inspired by some anatomical diagrams that I saw the other day. So we might jump over to digital and do that after a while. We'll see. I mean, I could do whatever I want, really. <laughs> Where did you see those anatomical, what did you say, diagrams? I just uh, bumped into them in a reference library. They're by Landseer. That's the guy's name, L-A-N-D-S-E-E-R. They're just very detailed diagrams of uh, cadaver dissections. You guys have probably seen them before. They pop up occasionally in 
anatomical instruction. But I don't know, I saw them the other day and uh, I'd seen them before, but they, uh, when I saw them the other day, they kind of, you know, hit different, as they say. I was inspired by them. Um, oh, well, I'll show you a couple when I go over to do that, if I want to go over to do that. I'll explain what inspired me about them. I like the three color look. You know, he did them with different color chalks and uh, I like, specifically, I like the patterns that he got of white against red against tan when he did um, some of the deep muscle diagrams. I like the overlaps there. Made the anatomy look almost like a quilt or something like that. And I kind of want to do a beast that has that going on on it. feeling like music working in silence again today how do I sound I sound loud enough the fans not too loud I'm all right the heat wave in New York continues Patrick Bateman, do you just go into every stream and say that? Is that your MO? Hi, Joey. How you doing, buddy?
getting a bit of a penumbra on this cast shadow. Just don't want a perfectly crisp line. It's got to be crisp enough that it still reads as a cast shadow and not a form shadow, but don't want it perfectly hard. Else it'll look weird. And if you don't know what a penumbra is or how it works, go check out my new drawing course, Form from Imagination. The link is in the description. Awesome work, thank you. This piece, remember Carlos Fonte style? Do you know him? Oh yeah. Carlos is one of the best ever. He's been an inspiration for me since I uh, bumped into his very old sketchbook. Uh, what was it called? Monstruo? Monstruo. I don't know if it's just supposed to be monstruo, but it's spelled weird. It has like a extra U in it or something. But um, I bumped into his sketchbook back at the Art Center Student Library over a decade ago now. He is a great, great artist. I also love, um, well, I mean, who knows what he thinks, but um, I just have to admit, I also love uh, his attitude. <laughs> if you guys follow him on Instagram, just like how surly he can be and how willing he is to just put out there that everybody sucks, people have no talent, they have no idea how hard it is, he's good, no one else is good. Like, <laughs> I love his attitude. I love how he just like, takes down the designs in movies even though he works in that industry it's very hard to find uh honest people like that anymore everybody's just all butterflies and sunshine because uh they're afraid of offending their friends or things like that but carlo knows everybody carlos knows everybody working on those things or everybody's working on those things knows him and he's just happy to be like that sucks garbage stupid design you guys fucked up see you later love that <laughs> Bye, Magda. Do you think to make those lives also on Twitch platform? No, I have no... I don't have any plans to go over to Twitch. I don't know why. I mean, Twitch is... Twitch is for gamers. Art streams on Twitch get very, very few views. I'd rather just make it easy for my audience where they know I'm in one place, you know? I have no plans to go over to Twitch. It's also just like, why would I want to be doing something as like calm and low energy and boring as drawing on a platform like Twitch where 
if you start watching me over there on the sidebar is watch somebody shoot someone in Call of Duty. It's like no one's going to stick around. Like you're, the, the incentives of the platform are going to pull you away to the more um, attention-grabby, life-wasty kind of a stuff. Hello, Stephen. You helped me to get myself together and draw through your courses at a time when I struggled in my work and in my life. Now I'm drawing often and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Lachos, congratulations. Happy to have helped. It is an honor to be of service. Hi, Cilios. Hi, Jana. I just got here. Is Steven Gasp using reference? <laughs> yeah, but you guys have to realize, I drew this hand from imagination. I drew this hand from memory, and then I went and shot that reference. I shot that reference uh, just a couple minutes before stream. So... I get the energy, I get the vibe from my mind, and then as I explained yesterday on stream, if I have done no useful transformation, it's stupid not to shoot a reference. If I had transformed this in some wild way, then yeah, there's no reference to be used and I wouldn't use it, but since it stayed pretty regular, it's like, it's dumb, ignorant, and embarrassing to not shoot a quick reference. It only takes two seconds, and you're not God, right? You're not going to invent something better than... Um, the weirdness of real forms. How could you? You're one of them. You're just a set within a set. Oh yeah, always, I would recommend always make it up from your head first. If you're imaginative, an imaginative style of artist and you fit your references to what you sketched, not the other way around. So I wouldn't shoot this reference first and I very very rarely ever do that with things like this. Um, you draw it first and then you shoot your reference to fit what came out of your mind. Hey, 
Hey, Pandovsky. I'm good. I'm great. I am doing great. And your monster skips leg day? If I had a nickel for every time somebody types that in chat. <laughs> No, oh, it's so hot already at 9.30 a.m. in New York. It's already so hot. Hi, Stephen. I'm from Spain. I'd like to know what is your favorite anatomy book of all time to improve difficult intersections in the human body? Um, I, I don't have a favorite of all time because they're all imperfect. Uh, I wish I had an easy answer, but I think if you want to master something like the difficult intersections of the human body... You kind of got to look at all of them. The ones that I used were George Bridgman's Life Drawing. There's all sorts of books in his series. Um, Paul Reicher's Artist Artistic Anatomy. Um, the Elliot Goldfinger Human Anatomy for Artists. And I think it's Elliot Goldfinger, right? Someone in the chat will correct me if it's not. Elliot Goldfinger's Human Anatomy for Artists. Or is it Artistic Anatomy? Or no, right? Share is artistic anatomy. I'm doing these off the top of my head. I don't remember. Um, Stephen Rogers Peck's book. Um, I was trained in anatomy by Ray Bustos. He didn't have a book back when I took classes with him, but um, he does now. I'd assume it's very, very good. I haven't seen it yet. What are the books? I mean, a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They're all good at some things and weak at, at others, so. I told this teen about your YouTube. She was so hype, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. We grow by word of mouth here. That's for sure. And that's the only way this thing grows, word of mouth. 
everybody thinks I should buy a commercial for the Super Bowl, but I refuse. You know, word of mouth. That's my marketing strategy. I think I'll hold off from the Super Bowl ad for a while. Are you using the item underneath your hand to prevent smudges? Yep. Just a little scrap from a scratchbook, from a sketchbook. I wonder if I had any coffee left in the coffee pot. I'll be right back. I'm going to check my coffee pot. I did, but it was burnt. It was burnt. What makes something perfect for you? There is no perfect. I don't consider anything perfect. Perfect is an abstraction. It's impossible. It's also a foolish concept. I don't even think my favorite pieces of art made by my favorite artists are perfect. I can find problems, quote unquote, with my absolute favorite pieces of art. If you're an artist worth your salt, you can always imagine something better. So perfect doesn't exist.
perfect is so just ridiculous and asinine. All it, it serves no useful function as a concept, is unachievable, exists nowhere, and all it does is make sure that you never get any work done. All it does is hinder you. I think you should utterly delete the idea of perfection. Does your drawing course include feedback? Yep. Sure does, baby. I'm giving feedback on everything these days. Doing dog diagrams, drawovers. I made a few videos for people to explain particular concepts. I'd show you, but I'd have to switch around my stream setup to show my screen, so I'm just gonna keep drawing for a bit. But if you stick around when I switch over to digital, I'll uh, I'll show some of the notes that we've been doing. You get the course. You get the course. Oh, hello, puppy. Oh, hello. Yeah, oh, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? That's a big stretch. How you doing? What's up? You're a good pup. You're a good pup. You're a good pup. I got an idea. Why don't you go take a nap? Oh, you got a shake right there. It's a lot of hair. Yeah, go plop down in your little bed now. Bye, Simon. Latcho says, it amazes me how bold your core shadows are. It screams confidence. I realize that when I get to practice my drawings following your course. Yeah, it, it's, a very, um, it's a very common phenomenon that as you improve at art, it only deepens your appreciation for the scope of my achievement. I hate to say it, but when you're a beginner, your ignorance hinders you from understanding just how good I am. It's one of your responsibilities to get better at art so that you can appreciate the nuance and impossibility of my talent.
Bobby Smitty says, this sketch looks tangible with the amount of value in it. I almost feel like the character will move on the paper. What can I say? What can I say? I'm really just that good. Thanks, Bobby. If it's got any energy in life to it, it's because it's fun to draw. Because I'm not letting myself get bored. My number one priority is that I enjoy it while I do it. And I think that keeps my excitement up and that shows in the drawing. Mauricio AB says your values of gray look like a 3D rendering. <laughs> Just, uh, just comes from a deep understanding of the modeling factors and a comprehensive understanding of form. It is possible to get that very dimensional 3D feeling. Also, it feels like a 3D model while I draw it. It feels like I'm sculpting a real thing. And if you want to learn how to trip your brain out like that, check out my course, Form from Imagination, where you can learn to utterly master form and transform the way that you experience it. Hi Stephen, hi chat. Is realism actually the first thing to learn as an art beginner? Here's the thing about art. There is no structure to art. There, well, that is to say there's no necessary structure to art. There also isn't any structure, but in terms of being a beginner, assessments of how you're gonna make progress, let's say there's no necessary structure. You can do it absolutely any way you want. You can skip any area that you want. You can jump to any goal that you want. The difficulty is that for most people, most people just don't have the self-confidence and the self-belief to do that because it requires you to trust yourself and to go down roads that you have chosen for yourself completely on your own um, with no help and with no, no backup, no feedback and people constantly trying to knock you off course saying there's a better way to do it, a faster way to do it. Most people do not have the confidence and the faith in themselves to do that. If you do, and you're willing to work hard, you can absolutely do it any way you want and you need not learn anything you're uninterested in. You can just make your dream thing right from day one and figure it out as you go. That is absolutely possible. You are not required to do anything in art. There is no structure in art, um, but if you don't have that level of confidence, if that's just not your natural temperament, usually having some sort of structure helps. And traditionally speaking, for most people, it's easier to learn the rudiments 
of realism because it sets for a it sets a good benchmark for why things look the way they do and then transfer that knowledge to something more abstract or stylized um, because you'll understand really it's form it's just form i know people try to resist but it is just form it's form all the way down it's just before you investigate realism you don't know how form works what makes the illusion of 3d things so if you go try to stylize you're going to mess them up um, and yes, that goes for even if you're just trying to do flat 2D things, because anything that's representational, even if it's flat two-dimensional shapes, are representing forms. They're just excluding the illusion of three-dimensionality and light. But the overall, what is a flat shape? What is a flat shape on a canvas? It's an outline, right? What is an outline? What is a contour? Surprise! It's just a form that happens to be turning away from your eye and interfacing with the background, but it's still a form. It's still a structure in space. So form is king. I mean, form is everything uh, for any artistic style, short of full abstract expressionism. But there's a long and storied history of abstract expressionism that, you know, it still is meant to look like a form. It just is not representational. It doesn't look like anything that you could say, this is this, that is that, you know? Hey, Metal Soup. I am well. I hope you are well as well. Where did you get the music in the ad? Yeah, epidemic sound. Will the next chapter of the Zapata universe mention the course or will it be a major plot point? Uh, I don't think so, but I reserve the right to do whatever I want. I don't really... Uh, I don't really think of uh, something as important as drawing Ascendant, the Eternal Chronicles of Steven Zapata, Lasting Legacy 1, Epic 1, as a, a place for promotion or product placement. It's much too, much too valuable as a piece of social commentary to get bogged down with that, you know? This is extremely important stuff. We need to focus on the positive changes we can make in the world with it. Hey, Ja, what up?
Thank you, Stavros. I saw you recently draw from reference from NMA. Do they sell reference packs without having a sub? I don't think so. I think they were thinking of doing that a while ago. Um, they had like a separate company called Draw This. And they were saying they were going to release just that as its own subscription, but I think they bailed. I was keeping my eye on drawthis.com. But um, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, I got an email from them a, long, a while ago, over a year ago. And I was like, it's just the NMA reference library now. I do like the way they light theirs because um, I hate to say it, but most most references don't um, like most reference packs you get on the internet. In my opinion, they're not lit nicely for learning. They're nice for this is going to sound pejorative, but they're nice for photo bashing because. Well, a lot of people need to photo bash, right? That's how a lot of work is done today. They need to be able to just drop this stuff into photos and paint into paintings and paint over it and stuff like that. Um, but for learning and for the kind of art that I do, where I'm just drawing the stuff, most photo references have just way too many light sources and like a really bright background that washes out the shadows and things like that. And it makes it very difficult for a beginner to learn. The people at NMA know that, and because they're not designing the references for photo bashing, because they're designing them for drawing, they do what most people feel uncomfortable doing, which is that most of them are shot one light source, one hard light source that leaves crisp shadow shapes, good half tones, um, and they shoot them on dark gray backgrounds so that the shadows actually stand out and they don't get filled with light. Have you ever thought about doing storyboard type things like how manga is done? Um, I've done storyboards for work. And uh, sounds like you've never seen the incredible uh, genre defining drawing ascendant, the Eternal Chronicles of Steven Zapata, Lasting Legacy 1, Episode 1. So I think we might need to do a play of that later, play the first episode. Look, the truth is that Here's the, horror, here's the nightmare for all other artists. Here's the painful truth for all other artists. I'm not just good at this. I'm sorry, I said good, the best. I'm not just the best at this. I'm also a master storyteller. Yeah, actually, it's like, damn, you know? I am the really oof. It's pretty unfair how good I am. I'm so good at it, actually, I've taught classes in it, like the best design schools in the world, taught dramatic narrative and storytelling at the best design schools in the world. So it's looking bad out there for everybody else. You know, they're trying to catch up on this. They're trying to get here. It's like got a whole other tool bag of masteries that people just can't get to. So yeah, yeah, it's looking bad out there. Looking bad out there. to darken this whole I like the variety of shadow values that I have here I like that this is darker than this this has a variety this is darker than this but for this on its own I want this to step down just one step so I got to darken that a bit
How much photo bashing is required in the industry like animation and film, not counting realistic game stuff? It depends on the gig. I mean, I think if you're gonna go into those industries, you should be willing to, by accident, wind up at a place where you do only that. I mean, the way things are going in the industries, yeah, it's very easy to wind up in a place where you never draw, you know? And, and if you drew something, you'd piss someone off. They'd be like, stop wasting our time and our money. Um, if you're gonna go into those industries, you need to be willing to just photo bash, only photo bash, do every shortcut possible. It ain't for me. I like doing this. I like saying no to all of the rushing in the world, refusing to just drink the Kool-Aid on the need to go fast and just deliver the absolute bare minimum, not push it, to rush, to be thoughtless, to be careless, to go for the lowest common denominator. I refuse plenty of people to do that. I like this. How long has this taken you so far? This one's going fast. How long did we draw this on stream yesterday? What was yesterday's stream? Like three and a half hours, three hours-ish. And then I did the initial sketch in like an hour the day before on my own time. So it's probably under five hours right now. Which is pretty fast, pretty fast for me for something like this. I'd be willing to spend way longer on it. It's going quick. It's like, if you think that's a long time, um, just ask yourself, how many five hour periods have you let go by in your life where you did nothing? So when you look at it that way, five hours is, it's piss in the wind. It's, might as well be zero. It's no effort at all. That's how I think of it. Here's my little point three. Are you gonna give this guy a name? I don't know. I usually just, um, I usually name something like right before I post it. That's when I do it. For some reason, like right before I'm gonna post it, that's where my brain feels like it knows what its name is. Like right now, I have no idea what I would name it. I feel like I usually don't know what something is until I'm done, you know, when I'm just freely sketching like this. I try not to put expectations like that on it or try to put it in a box or anything like that. This is really just a spiritual experience for me at this point. It is honoring the need to create and that is all.
Are you on the level? Are you ready to swear right here, right now, before the devil? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. telling you man the secret to a solid imaginative rendering is being able to uh, render shadow areas well like this from imagination understanding the reflected light effects what's going to get darker what's going to get lighter what's going to have ambient occlusion where the dark accents are going to go that is the secret to a good imaginative render that's the stuff no one can do and that really stands out and looks real and people are just unwilling to do it because it takes a long time as well. If you want to practice that, the backlit sphere, that's the exercise for that. People who are taking my course, they know. They know what's up there. They know the backlit sphere is the real deal. The backlit sphere, when you only have a little crescent of light and you still want it to be a beautiful drawing, that's what teaches you. It's like, all right, how do I make this look solid and structural and interesting? when I've only got a hyper-compressed, dark shadow range to constitute the picture. That's the real deal right there. Steven, can a drawing be overworked? Not, not if you actually know the modeling factors. Not, not if you actually know what makes something look rendered. Like if you actually understand value and you can respect the value hierarchy and the contrast hierarchy and you can effectively present the modeling factors, then no. Um, you can render for eternity. And as long as you're respecting the modeling factors, the drawing will become only more and more beautiful and refined. It is understanding them well sort of unlocks the door to effectively spending like 100 hours on a drawing, which certainly opened up new levels for me. And a lot of my most popular drawings on the internet are the ones that I've spent ridiculously long on. If you don't understand the modeling factors, then yes, then yes, you can overwork it because as you progress, you will destroy one or you will disrespect the value hierarchy as you just sort of thoughtlessly make stuff darker or lighter. And then, yeah, so it's less overworking. It's just incorrect working, you know? Hello, Steven. Do you believe art blocks can last for entire months? I'm kind of going through that right now, and I wonder if I have the wrong approach. I did both studies and things for imagination. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they can last for, for months. I mean, whatever happens, happens, right? But um, don't let it become a bigger thing than it is. Art blocks are not real. They're not an actual thing. You're just, something is going on in your life. You're 
you're distracted by something else, you have a bigger fish that you need to fry, you haven't set up the life situation around art to allow those ideas to flow and to feel comfortable spending time with them. Um, for example, it's very easy to experience art block if you feel like you need to rush because no one around you respects your artistic life or your artistic endeavor, right? It's a very common source of art block that you feel like you're, you know, your your girlfriend or your parents, every time they see you drawing, they would wish you were doing something else, you know, doing something more useful or spending time with them or something like that. And that just starts to wear on you for a while if you never address it, you know, and it it will manifest as art block, which actually has nothing to do with the block. It's not with the art. It's not real. It, it doesn't it doesn't produce anything. It's just that there's these other snags in life that are incentivizing you to not spend your time doing art. So um, I would look for those problems first and foremost. Thank you, Angst Thoughts. Ayub says, what are the simple steps to composing landscapes? I don't know how to make my compositions good or even know how to guide the viewer's eye. There are no simple steps. There are no simple steps. Learn the principles of design study the masters. I would begin with, um, you know, I think that some of the New England school painters who came out of the Hudson River School here in America were some of the best designers in history of, um, of landscapes. I think that they're better to study for most people than like Frederick Church or something, stuff like that, because those come off kind of Baroque. So I would look at the New England school painters that came out of the Hudson River School. So that's painters like Aldro Hibbard, for example. Um, or you can look at the California Impressionists, very similar. We could basically group them together. Some people get very offended by that. I feel like they group together. They have a lot of the same interests. So look at the California Impressionists from late 1800s on to, not in the late 1800s, um, early 1900s to mid 1900s uh, artists like Edgar Payne, for example, uh, they were very deep into design of landscapes and what we consider to be modern movements of landscape mastery, like animation background design and the, you know, golden age animation background artists like, um, like, what's his name? Uh, Erwin Earl, or Irvin Earl, the Sleeping Beauty guy. He has a strange name, I forget, but they all come out of that. They all come out of the California Impressionist movement. You have something planned for the background or is it gonna be blank? Um, I really improvised this drawing with no real plan. So I think it, the particular cut of this one because it's off balance and coming in from the side, I think it looks good with a blank background. Um, I think I'll probably leave it. If it was more straight down the barrel, my go-to on those kinds of drawings is to put in a black background, which takes a long time, but usually looks nice. Um, but I think for this one, I'll probably leave it blank. I think it looks confident cutting into the white of the page like that. I like it fine like that. I reserve the right to change my mind though. I've had people cry and say I traumatized them with my art. Yeah, sounds like something only a family member could say. So um, problems like that need to get addressed. They are definitely a source of art block. You're just, you're getting way more energy off of their despair than you are your art. Um, and that's always gonna keep you from making art. So you need to sit them down, look them straight in the eyes and tell them that they need to figure themselves out and that you are not responsible for their happiness in that way. And that if they were really a well-adjusted individual who wasn't externalizing their own happiness onto the souls of others, that they would be glad that you are doing the thing that you wanna do most whenever you sit and make art. And they will get angry at you and they will call you a devil 
and they will say that um, they never should have trusted you to be reasonable or anything like that and uh, you just you just smirk just make them angrier and angrier and you know you've won the game if they hit you while they're striking you just uh, laugh say there's nothing nothing you can do with all your strength We're streaming early today, aren't we? I do whatever I want. I just do whatever I want. I get to live a very zen life with all this art stuff. Decide my own schedule. Just ask myself moment to moment, eh, what do I want to do now? Eh, I guess I'll do this, I guess I'll do that. Just do whatever I want. It's a great way to be. There's something about feeling free and like uh, you can rest as much as you want. There's something about that that makes it easier to work, <laughs> makes you more productive, makes you do more because um, just the, the pressure's off, you know? At least it does that for me. I'm way more productive when I'm left to my own devices than I am when I'm on a job. <laughs> No job can contain the, uh, the amount of productivity that I have under the hood for myself. Mm -hmm. 
Coming along, coming along. Looking much more complete now that all this stuff goes out to the edge of the paper. I'm sure we'll actually get around to using that hand reference any minute now. <laughs> I shot it, but I haven't done a damn thing with it yet. I know, I just feel like working on the rest of the thing. What are you using to record, thinking of trying what you're doing? Uh, I have a pretty pretty damn good camera because uh, pencils are very hard to reproduce nicely. I use the Lumix GH5. Before that, I used um, the, uh, the Brio 4K webcam. I didn't use it at 4K. It actually doesn't, doesn't work great at 4K. Um, the frame rate's all off in my experience, but um, I, I used it at 1920 by 1080 and it was pretty crisp, but um, still a webcam and pencil drawings are like the hardest thing to capture. So just, uh, you know, for me, I was like, screw it. Just getting a great camera, really good camera.
quite an investment because it's a very good camera but very good cameras need very expensive memory cards like the memory cards I use on this thing are like hundred like hundred and fifty dollars each and you need a great computer of course because if you're gonna edit any of it um, all of the footage it uses is super heavy and involved so you need a very good computer it compounds it compounds the problems but at least my precious little drawings actually look good instead of being blurry messes Stephen, is art a testament to the existence of free will or is it the most obvious example of the lack thereof? I'm on the lack thereof side, personally. I mean, I don't know how I do this, so... The more I look for my... The closer I look for my agency in the construction of a complicated piece of art, I really don't... Um, harder it is to find. And then the audience watches on a tiny six inch screen. Yeah, it's just for me. I know no one's, most people aren't even really looking at the drawing. <laughs> They're just listening to me talk. This is on in the background. They're doing their own thing. It's just for me. It's just so I feel good about it. And so that I can have a nice record of the things that I make, you know. That's nice, you know, I'll have these records hopefully forever. You know, I can always look back on these streams when I'm a wrinkly old man and be like, oh yeah, remember that one? That was a good one. <laughs> Jesus. Crazy to think that I didn't know in only three days the AIs would erupt from that volcano and it would be the end of the world as we know. Oh God, stop electrocuting me, AIs. Ah. That'll be good. It'll be nice to look back on that. Steven, you are looking sunburned, my friend. I'm not. Oh, it's just my white balance is off on my camera. I don't think I'll be able to change that now that I'm live. Let me see. Yeah, it's just that it, uh, When I move around, sometimes it'll readjust the exposure and the white balance, and then it'll make me look burnt. I actually screenshotted your drawing and sculpting it while having your stream playing in the background. Nice. Send me a picture when you're done. Or a screenshot. I do love it when people sculpt the concepts. I love seeing that. It's always fun. If anybody out there does a does a sculpture, ZBrush, traditional, whatever, off of my um, concepts, do uh, do send me shots. I'll, uh, I'll s email them to me. I'll save them in a folder and I'll show them on stream sometimes. It's always very flattering. Hey, Nick.
You might think I'm crazy The way I've been craving Not to put it quite plain But uh, just give me them babies uh, So what you doing tonight? Better say do me right Watch a movie the way you see thing tonight This guy reminds me of some obscure Japanese game cover art from the 90s. I'm into that. At what moment you consider you don't need to render and the thing is done? Um, as soon as I'm bored. <laughs> um, it's different when you have other considerations, but for me, I just trust myself, you know? I, um, I really trust that if I find the picture satisfying, the audience will find it satisfying. I um, I just trust myself. I don't know how else to put it at this point. You know, it's been a long road, but I'm like, I, how to put this? There's very few people with more discerning, like, taste and judgment about art. Right? Not to be arrogant. I mean, I could be arrogant because certainly my taste is superior to everybody else's. But just in general, if you're an experienced artist and you've been doing this a long time, you just have a more elevated feeling of like what it takes for something to be good or done than 95% of people consuming art. So if I'm satisfied with it, I can trust that most other people will be as well. So I just follow my gut. And I don't force anything, you know, if I'm horribly bored, I don't, I don't do it. Hi, Jenny. Thank you. Has the weather turned merciful on your side? Not yet. It's, it's already hot here. It's not even noon. And uh, around me, it's hottest in, um, in the late afternoon, actually. So I have that to look forward to. Yeah, it's already 90 degrees by me. It's not even 11. It's not even 11 a.m.
Do you look at bodybuilders for reference sometimes? Yeah. Love looking at freaks. I've drawn a lot of bodybuilders. I mean, they, an actual bodybuilder, you know, like a, like a Phil Heath or a big Rami or something like that, they look freakier than this. <laughs> I mean, if I put that stuff in a drawing, you wouldn't even believe it. You know, they look crazier than anything that's going on here. Steven, would you recommend artists to pursue live streaming, things of that nature ASAP or strive for a certain level of skill quality first? Um, that's a really good question. I mean, I think um, it depends what you want. Um, if you want a job, live streaming and stuff like that is not going to help you get it. Um, but if you want companionship, it's great for that. If you want to build an online presence, I think it's okay to, um, some people say you shouldn't like put your learning out there as part of your online presence. Cause it's like, oh, it makes your art look bad or it's not up to the level. I don't agree with that. I think um, people are only gonna remember the good stuff you do later, you know? And they're, if, if you're not doing great stuff right now, no one's gonna stick around and look at it, you know? So. Um, I think you can stream in that case to share your learning process with a tight audience who is probably also learning. They're probably also artists. Just expect that there's not going to be a lot of them. As long as you're okay with that, I think you can have a very good experience. You'll be building friendships and relationships. And people will be interested if you're actually sharing your learning process, like saying like, Oh, I discovered this artist yesterday. I tried such and such and this really worked. You guys should try it. Um, I think it's a good idea because a big part of making it in art is having friendships and having connections. You know, it's, it's a very important thing. So I think, I think it's a good idea. Are you going to make more drawing meditations? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all coming. I'm just getting used to the new schedule that I'm structuring for myself. But the drawing meditations are very important to me. They're like a, the most helpful thing that I do. So I don't wanna, I'm not stopping on those. You get the course. You get the course. Ivan says, also want to say, I found that we share the same viewpoint on the universe in which we both know the source of our thoughts is not in our brains, but somewhere else. And basically fate is real, our lives, past, present, and future are all written down, so to speak. Well, I mean, I, 
maybe we have similar point, the similar views, but um, I have to say, I don't think, I personally don't think that. I don't, um, I personally don't believe in free will, but I don't take that fatalistically. Um, just because I don't believe in free will doesn't mean that I believe in fate, because um, I don't believe the future exists, nor does the past. There's only what is occurring now in a present that is ungraspable. In fact, even the present seems to be fallacious. I mean, anything that you would try to pinpoint as the present is immediately the past. So in some very deep sense, the mind is a graveyard, only things that once were. In this viewpoint, which um, again, I try not to take philosophically, it's, it seems genuinely true and I try to live my life by it. Um, fate is of course irrelevant because what will be is not out there waiting to be encountered or to be slotted into. Um, there is only the unraveling of reality moment to moment. And for creatures trapped in an infinite present in which the future and past are only dreams, the idea that that would perhaps be determined or that someone could guess what would happen next correctly, it just means nothing. I mean, when that comes to pass, it will only be the same as everything else, an unknowable now. So, yeah, I don't, fate doesn't make sense to me either, and I don't feel like I'm barreling towards something fated. I'm, I have the immense good fortune of being able to discover what is going to happen moment to moment, so... How big is this paper? This is 14 by 17 inches. So let's see, how much do I wanna take from my reference here? So I drew this hand first, and then I shot the ref after, so they don't align exactly. The fingers are in different positions. So I'm wondering if I wanna redraw this so that stuff like this pinky aligns with what it looks like in the reference, or I want to just keep what I had here. I'll just try to split the difference, I think. Make some stuff up. Use other things from the reference. Let's see. If it goes poorly, I can always double back. Hello, Stephen. I got a, oh, greetings from Germany. I'm drawing together with you, You're such an inspiration. Thank you, Constantine. Take care. Many greetings from New York. 
Serena says, hello, Stephen. I got two years left in art school and I want to make the best out of it. I'd like to improve my art faster. I know what I need to work on, but I feel distracted by all the options. What would you do if you were me? I don't know what I would do if I were you. Um, the truth is that all we can do in life is decide. You know, decision making is the very stuff of life. You, if we look at life in terms of the possibilities that we close off, the more significant part of life is the things that we turn down, the things that we refuse to do, rather than the things that we choose to do. You must get very comfortable with that. So you just need to pick. I mean, you're distracted by all of these options. Remember that any option that you pick is still going to be opening the door to one thing and closing the door to many others. You must simply choose and you must trust that you will figure things out as time goes on and that you can always redo your choice. You can always change your mind. But don't be trapped, as so many people are, by complete indecisiveness and an inability to trust themselves. Choose something. Stick to it. Work hard at it. Know that the stranger it is, the more worth it, it is, the more the humdrum, mundane parts of life will do their best to convince you that you can't do it. And stick with it. Just fight against that. Remember that in every painful moment, at every time that you would feel like quitting, if you just push through that wall, you will be an ever more rarefied company on the other side because you're not special. Everybody else feels the way you do. So every time that you don't quit, when you get through that wall, the field of competitors will be cut in half. And then at the next wall, cut in half again. And at the next wall, cut in half again. And at the next wall, cut in half again. Because however intensely you feel like washing out or changing your mind or dipping to something else, everybody else feels that way and the vast majority will dip. They will quit. They will be unable to stick with it. The secret to achieving some amount of mastery or some amount of success, some amount of skill, whatever you may be looking for, is to simply refuse to quit. Simply refuse to quit. God, everybody keeps saying I have the lobster skin. Hi, Omar. I don't know what you guys are seeing. It's just the color balance on my uh, camera. Look, if I turn my auto exposure off, If I turn my auto exposure off, I'll look normal all the time, but um, it messes my, fr it destroys my frame rate <laughs> for some reason. So I don't like using it. So I just leave it on auto. Occasionally I'll get red, but I'm not sunburned at all. It's just the lights. Or you guys need to recalibrate your screens or something like that. Tavio says, Stephen, besides art, is there anything you like to do? Any other hobbies? Share it with us. Not really. I mean, I play a few video games like anybody else. You know, I go on and off with that. I'm not playing any right now. I haven't played in months. Um, I don't know. I find art to be like bottomlessly interesting. And for the stuff I do here, you know, what is my career and my job? It's like I had to learn a lot of things that would otherwise be hobbies to do that. You know, I had to learn how to edit, how to do sound, um, cinematography stuff and things like that. Like I had to learn all sorts of other skills um, to be able to to do this kind of thing. This this whole apparatus that I run here requires uh, a lot of nested skills. Um, I don't know. Read. I like reading. No real other hobbies, you know? I'm even boring when it comes to exercise. I just run. I don't even, I don't, I don't even measure how far I run, you know? I don't know. I mean, I draw ridiculous. I don't have a lot of time for anything else. I draw a ridiculous amount every day. I mean, 
I got on this stream at like, what, 9 a.m.? And when I started, I'd already been drawing for an hour or two. Look, I did... I did, I did these this morning with my morning coffee. A couple little figure sketches. There's another one. So I do that before I stream. When I get off stream, I'll keep drawing or I'll be critiquing people's drawings, giving them notes on drawings, making diagrams about drawing. I just draw all day. <laughs> I mean, I, I draw an absurd amount, a really absurd amount, an inadvisable amount. I gotta get my camera to focus again. There you go. took some of the saturation off my camera. Maybe now I look less red. Oh, I see. Now you guys are fucking with me. I get you. Look, I got the solution right here, dog. There we go. <laughs> Everybody feeling good about that? My green screen's still up? Did I have a like this? Oh, there's a little bit of halation around it now. But I guess it's not that noticeable because uh just in the dark part of my desk. I've never seen your female figure drawings before. They look nice, thank you. I love when people leave comments on, on my stuff. Like, how come you never draw girls? It's like, I draw girls all the time. I just don't post them because they're boring.
On my cayuse, let me wander over yonder till I see the mountain sun. Mm -hmm. I think I do like. Mm, but that's a bit of a confusing angle. Let me see. I think that thumb I will change. I think I like what's in the reference better. Hello, Carl. All the zigzagging wrinkles on something like curled thumb, everything that pops up in this area is a cheap way, cheap way to get good shapes. Easy, easy, easy. Goodbye, Jack. Get your exercise. Hold on.
making some stuff up on this hand. Little cast shadows, little folds. How does it work that people stylize shapes so much, but their drawings still appear realistic or believable? It's just the modeling factors. It's just the um, understanding the elements that make something look three-dimensional. I mean, reality can hold something of any shape, right? So as long as you understand what allows that to be possible, what makes the eye read something as dimensional, you can push anything as far as you want and you can still sculpt it. You can still make it look round. If you want to understand more about that, you get the course. You get the course. You struggle. You're confused. You worry. The drawings, they don't come out good. They don't come out good. You panic. And then you get the course. It's that simple. You just get the course. Okay? If you think I have any idea what that voice is, I do not. I don't know what accent that's supposed to be. I have no clue. Mafia boss vibes? Yeah, that makes sense to me. It's not, it was not at all planned, but yeah, I think it's, it does come off like that. I think when I originally did it, I was going for some sort of old man on a stoop, giving advice to youngins or something like that. I am not an accent guy, that's for sure. I don't have the gift for that. They all sound the same to me. I'm like one of those people who can't tell apart Irish and Scottish accents. It's very bad. I just, I don't, I don't have the ear for it. Hello, Magda. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Sometimes it comes out looking sculptural. Come back like a hurricane I'm gonna take you higher On a cloud, on a silver hill 
I'm gonna take you higher Away, away, away I have a question for Steven Zapotar. What do you think of the original color pigments for marble statues in ancient Greek? I mean, I love them. I think that's so cool. I'm, I, uh, I've done a few things inspired by that in the past. I love the sort of, um, you know, the, I love the contrast between the romanticized view that we have of antiquity and the classics and the actual, like, almost vibrant gaudiness of what was actually going on. But that's kind of across the board. You know, we, we even tend to think of the Renaissance as kind of browner and more stagnant than it actually was medieval times you know we tend to think of castles as all gray walls and things like that when in actuality uh castle walls were you know highly painted they had frescoes they would hang very colorful tapestries and repeating f pattern fabrics all over the walls to cover up the drabness um yeah our our romanticized view tends to be quite uh desaturated by the lens of history and the fact that everything has fallen apart and uh, i've always loved the the facts there where everything is much more gaudy than we think of because uh because they didn't have tv <laughs> they were like all right well look we got to make this stuff as exciting as possible because this is all we got you know yeah that's hurricane by cannons copy that I'm falling into the tunnel of you How long does most of your artwork take? Hours and hours. This is coming in under six right now. And um, it's getting there, you know. I could I could share it as done and people would accept that. Um, you know, once I do that hand a bit more and all that, it's like, there's enough there that if that hand was done, I could share it as done. People would be like, yeah, I get that. So for something quick like this, 10-ish hours, but you know, I can do something like this quick like that just because I have a lot of experience. I've been doing this kind of thing for a long time. But um, I spend, there's plenty of drawings I'll spend a hundred hours on, you know? I try not to rush. It's hard. You have to kind of set up your life so that, it's more like about setting up your life so that you don't have to rush. But um, I really like taking my time. I'm, I'm trying to put in a lot of, I have put in a, an immense amount of work and thoughtfulness and risk and stressful nights trying to set myself up so that I don't have to rush. Because um, unless you do it pointedly, almost everything in the current art world will beg you to go as fast as you can, you know? You have another job, so you don't have a lot of time. So you rush when you do make your work because you're like, all right, well, I only get a couple hours a week. I want to get to a good product. Then you get an art job and then, you know, your boss and the gigs are just like, do it as fast as you can. We're paying you hourly. Do it as fast as you can. It's like, it's very hard to set yourself up so that you can just take your time, you know. I'm trying to appreciate it. 
It's like I put in the work to set it up. I'm gonna use it. Ooh, Magda's going to see some Impressionists this Saturday. Nice. Nice. I think I'll go to the Met soon. I don't think I've been since I started working on the course. It's been a few months. I'll go look at some... Go to the hallowed halls of art. I really need to go to the Frick, though. The Frick has been closed for the pandemic, and uh, I really want to get in there. I wonder if they've reopened completely. I gotta check. I think they've only reopened uh, a part of the Frick. People who take the course, they get what I just did right there. Seems subtly simple, or very simple, but there's a bit more to it than it seems. You guys get what I'm doing. Going from dark shape to dark shape so that the stump is only touching the light in the middle parts of the stroke. Keeps it nice and smooth. So yeah, people who've seen the sphere demo, they can tell that as I'm scrubbing, I'm going from this dark shape to this dark shape. And I'm leaving the ugly splotchy part of the stump, the stump strokes in the shadows that are gonna be dark anyway. I guess you guys know now too. I'll say nothing on this topic for free. Have you had back problems due to drawing posture? No, I mean, my back doesn't really hurt me generally. Um, I try to, you know, stretch and get a little bit of exercise. Ugh. But I've been lucky to avoid back issues so far. Um, drawing traditionally helps because you're always kind of shifting a little bit. You get a lot of healthy movement drawing traditionally. What kind of artist tape do you use? I don't know, I don't know what this is. And any artist tape will do. Just uh, detack it on your shirt first so it doesn't tear your paper when you peel it off. Good morning, Jensen. Yeah. Yeah, I plan on going to that, Magda.
I think it was actually recently in the news, that thing, because of the show that the Met is putting on. I've seen the reconstructions online for years, but uh, it'll be fun to actually go see the colored sculptures for real. Actually, I do think when I was in Italy, when I went to some villa, they got a lot of villas over there, um, in one of these, like, uh, museum villas, they had a, a reconstruction that was colored, if I remember correctly. Or I might be thinking at the Getty, Getty Villa in Malibu, back in L.A. Have you ever thought of moving out of New York? If so, where? Um, I've thought of moving out of New York City, moving to upstate New York or something like that, but not lately. All of my moving thoughts have been in, in my immediate area lately. I did move from New York to go to college. I lived in L.A. I loved L.A. L.A. is a great place to live. I lived in Los Angeles for nine years. The damn cover came off of my pad here. And it makes me very upset. All right, I'm gonna get some scissors and cut this off because I hate this little, actually, Looks like that would expose the whole pad. Damn this thing. I'm just gonna not mess with it. Just gonna leave that on. I was a highwayman along the coach roads I did ride Sword and pistol by my side Many a young maid lost her baubles to my trade Many a soldier shed his lifeblood on my blade 
The bastards hung me in the spring of twenty-five. But I am still alive. I was a sailor. I was born upon the tide. And by the sea I did abide. Mm -hmm. They buried me in that gray tomb that knows no sound. But I am still around. I fly a starship across the universe divide and when I reach the other side I will find a place to rest my spirit if I can perhaps I may become a highway man again Or I might simply be a single drop of rain But I will remain And I'll be back again And again And again And again And Suarez, Steven, drawing looks great. Thank you. Watching you from the Philippines. It's 11.30 p.m. here. Wow. Good evening to you in the Philippines. We're 12 hours apart. It's 11.30 a.m. here in New York. Watching you work makes me realize I need to slow down when drawing. That's why I'm here. It's one of the best reasons to stream. <laughs> this is like... Uh, this is like one of the only ways I can make that particular educational point. Like, you'd, it'd be hard to believe me when I say these simple things should take hours and hours if you couldn't see me doing it. James, don't wait until I'm done with my stream to do your stream. Because I was planning on going until like 2 today. <laughs> I'm going to be on for a while. You got to get to work, buddy. I'll be right back. I got to use the restroom. I play the ad. I play the ad. Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph, Joe. How are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months 
and then check back in with me. Hmm? Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, it's, it's amazing. I, hey, did, uh, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, you just drew this. That's right, wow. Born from Imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use Form from Imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking Form from Imagination if you experience any of these side effects. Loss of interest in your personal projects. Megalomaniacal self-confidence. Hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for. Drawing better than Steven Zapata. Or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. I'm laughing at Omar saying, Joe, stop watching yourself so happily. It's uncouth. Omar just won't let Joe have any joy. Best thing I've ever, best thing I've ever seen? I know. I know. We know. Joe, Omar, and myself, we know. We know it's the best thing you've ever seen. We know that. We had a good time making it. Yeah, Omar hates the spotlight, but um, Omar A is, uh, is the director of the commercial. We have him to thank. He knows how to write a, he knows how to run a tight set. Tight set. <laughs> well, I woke up Christmas morning and what did I see? I saw a lovely senorita looking back at me in Guadalupe. With big brown eyes, boy, what did you do this time? Made my excuses and a beeline for the bedroom door. She was begging and pleading, screaming, Por favor, mi cumpleaños. Stay with me, baby, it's cold outside. Kick your feet up, baby, it's Christmas time. And we are living in a difficult time. Cumpleaños <laughs> feliz. Happy birthday, Guadalupe.
What is he singing? That's Happy Birthday Guadalupe, one of the killer's Christmas songs, trying to invoke Christmas and lower the temperature around here. <laughs> Look, you just gotta work a hand as hard as it'll go. I mean, a hand can easily take as long as the whole rest of the picture. So if you spend five hours on everything else, you might spend five hours on the hand. I don't think this one will take that long, but just saying, in general. Do you create this creature for a story? No, this stuff just comes out of me pre-story, but sometimes by the end there's a story for it because uh, I've just spent so much time looking at it that I've cooked up something. Look, a thing like this is going to have some pretty nice nails. It's going to have some pretty serious nails. Perfectly manicured.
gonna plunge this whole back plane into shadow, which is not visible in the reference, but I'm sticking with the finger that I drew, which is at a different angle than the one that's in the reference. So I'm letting all of these back facing planes get strongly shaded. All right, so that's more than enough info. From the reference. Getting some of the big surprising value relationships. Squinting at it. Now I'm actually going to close the reference because I got good base info from it. But now if I want the hand to blend in with the rest of the drawing, I got to do the rest from my mind or else it's just always going to look different. If we need info back, we can always open it up again. But if it's going to feel of a piece with everything else we need to let the mind do its work on it. There's no substitute for just like closing everything else and just staying with the picture. Because as long as the reference is open, you'll always like flash your eyes up to look at it. And that's useful, there's things to learn in the reference, but don't forget that that's like breaking your flow and your immersion in the picture. I find I always do my best work when I'm just staring at the drawing for unbroken periods of time. Because it's like uh, the longer I stare at it, the more my mind is inclined to just accept it as reality. And it makes better and better evaluations of what's going on and dreams better and better things into it. So, for a referenced moment, start with the energy from imagination, then shoot a reference that fits your creative idea, and then don't stick with the reference the whole time. You know, that's what I do. You do whatever you want, but that's what works for me. 
I like to spend the majority of my time with the drawing, as I like to think of it, and not with something else. I want the drawing itself to tell me what it needs in order to look cool instead of having something else like a reference just telling me over and over again this is me this is me try to make it look like me it's like how great is the reference anyway you know it's not that great it's just a picture of my hand it's not like if I posted that picture of my hand people would be like wow what a great hand it's so cool like so what are you really hoping for by um, trying to nail that reference exactly? And on that note, all of these points about drawing, have you guys ever seen the music video for Bad by Michael Jackson? That is the craziest music video I've ever seen. Everything about it is wrong. It makes no sense. Did you know that Martin Scorsese directed the music video for Bad? I lost, I damn near lost my mind when I watched the long form version of the music video for Bad with a, a bunch of my friends, Joe included, up at a cabin a few months ago and saw that the director was Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Welcome to the YouTube. Saudi was asking if you have any thoughts to share on burnout. Um, yeah, I think, well, it, people think burnout is different things. For me, for me, I make a distinction between just being exhausted and being burnt out. I consider burnt out feeling so bad about art that you're ready to quit or you're considering quitting. Anything less than that, it's just like you're tired. You're just tired. You're just physically uh, exhausted or emotionally exhausted. And um, that's all right. Just recover, you know? And um, yeah, generally you don't want to push your exhaustion so far that you cross into true burnout where you're thinking this isn't worth it. You know, you're thinking I should quit. This isn't for me. Who would want to do this? Who wants to feel this way all the time? Um, which is very real. You know, we often despair over art. And um, the best advice I could give that's generally applicable for avoiding that is on any given day, don't exhaust yourself. Always leave a little bit of gas in the tank so that the next day you feel all right, you don't go to bed totally exhausted. There's nothing gritty or cool about, um, there's nothing gritty or cool about ending your drawing session every day, being like, I left everything on the field, I gave it the most that I could. It's like, that's just a recipe for exhausting yourself. It's not disciplined. And it does not make you a good artist and it does not make you cool. You should get up from the drawing table like, I could have kept going. I, I almost always finish my day feeling like I, like I could draw more, like it wouldn't be a problem, like it'd be fun. And um, I think in the long run, that's more sustainable. And it makes you a better artist, actually.
How are you, Sam Lam? I was watching your YouTube when I was learning how to increase my art skills. Then I saw of your art and mind of my creation. I'm telling myself I'm trying to make my own imagina imagination from realistic. You were saying that on your YouTube channel. Yeah, we love to make it. We love to make it from our heads around here. It's fun to just dive in and just have it be you and your ideas with no, no barrier between you and your ideas. It's just what some of us want, you know? I just need to make it up. It's not something to do for its own sake, but for some of us, it's just, it don't feel real unless you're making it up. And what are we gonna do about it? There's nothing we can do about it. It's not up to us. I wish I was one of those people who just um, was perfectly happy, just like copying photos or something like that. It would be way easier, <laughs> it would be way easier to satisfy my art bug, but um, I'm not. That's not up to me. What art, paper, and tools you're using, that is in the description of the video. Nice hands, thank you. I do have lovely hands. The reward for a lifetime of avoiding manual labor. To me, the act of conjuring something up visually from nothing is the whole appeal of art. Yeah, that's just how it is for some of us. I usually feel exhausted by just thinking I have a lot to study in art. What should I do about it? Don't worry about that stuff. Just make your pictures. It's like, if you, if that is what exhausts, is what is, if that is what is exhausting you, if it's just like invading your brain, um, you don't need to pay attention to it. Go make your pictures, and um, doing your pictures will rejuvenate you and will naturally make you interested in learning the things you need to learn because you'll want them to be better.
but yeah, if you're if you find yourself distracted by how much you feel you need to learn an art, that just means that it's it's out of balance. That thing is overdrawing your energy, and you need to put it in its place. It's your responsibility to put it in its place. You need to empty that out. Maybe take a long break from practicing hard skills and just reconnect with why you're doing this in the first place. Do the pictures that you think are fun, that are the pictures that you wanted to do in the first place anyway. Drawing from pictures is like reading. Drawing from imagination is like writing much harder. Well, it is, you know, it probably varies from person to person, but, um, it also depends how you draw from reference, because there's also many active ways to draw from res reference. You know, you can purposefully make it more imaginative. You can transform the reference, edit it. You can design it heavily. There is a lot of things you can do to the reference as well. So it depends how you in particular work. Now that I bought the course, I was wondering how long it is supposed to take. If you take my advice and never do only the course, you also do your, your work while you work through the coursework. I think an average person who has a job and a real life that's going to sort of blow them off course and stuff like that. And if you really insist on getting a good version of each assignment. So um, if you... Um, if you feel like you did a bad job or it wasn't quite right, you're going to try again. You know, you're going to the assignment deliverable might be one sphere, but you're going to do spheres until you get one good one. Right. If you do it that way, which I think is the way you should do it. Um, I say that for the average person it should take about six months to get through the whole course. And it really shouldn't take you less than three. If you do it in less than three, for my money, I think um, you're probably rushing it and you're cheating yourself because you guys see you can't rush. You know, if you want to do really good work, you've got to be willing to go slow. So do you flip your canvas traditionally? Um, I rotate my paper. If I want to evaluate my drawing, a traditional drawing in different ways, sometimes I'll take a photo of it and just like, usually that's enough. Usually when I end every session, when I get up to go do something else, I'll take a picture of my progress and um, just seeing it small on my phone, that's usually enough to give me the like, the different viewpoint on it. It feels like it's flipped. I can see the thumbnail. I can see what's grouping nicely. I can see what isn't grouping nicely which is another benefit of spreading your, your effort over many sittings, is that you get to think on these things. You get to evaluate every time you get up and sleep on it and things like that. You can't be Russian. I mean, you can be Russian. I, I didn't mean, I mean, you can't be rushing. Excuse my New York accent. You're totally allowed to be a Russian person, for the record. Totally allowed. Thanks, Stephen. I don't feel like I am distracted, but I lack the start spark to draw. I do think I lack an anatomical knowledge as I want to draw realism. Yeah, if you want to draw really real, you kind of need to get into your anatomy. I mean, you don't have to. It depends what you want to draw. If, you, if the subject matter of the drawings you dream of making involves anatomy, a lot of anatomy, then yeah, you probably need to learn it. But some people, you know, the subject matters they want to draw, it's all people with clothes on. And in that case, I would say, do you really need anatomy? I don't actually think so. I personally don't actually think so. Here, let me zoom in on this because I'm getting real neurotic here now. Let me show you how crazy I'm getting on something like this hand.
trying to sculpt this hand like it's sculpted out of rock. Come on. Come on, camera. Give it to me. Look into my eyes. What if I come back here? Hmm? Huh? Yeah? Huh? Come on, what's wrong with you? All right, I'll do it by hand. Just take it all in with slow breaths. Favorite muscle to draw? Hmm. Brachioradialis, I think.
<laughs> Steven, Modern Day James is starting beef with you in his channel, please. Please. He's just trying to get me to go over there. He wants me to show up and fight him. Doesn't he know I'm too busy running my my little corner of the internet? Look, people see... I don't know how else to put this, but... People see a hand like this, and they feel threatened. Immediately. They panic. They're like, we gotta do anything we can to keep Steven from pulling off this hand. We need to keep this from happening. He's making everybody else look bad. He's making all of us look bad. But I have excellent negative capacity. I cannot be deterred and I cannot be distracted. I have the ability to ignore all of the wild turnings of the world and sink deeply, effortlessly into what I'm doing, no matter how tumultuous my surroundings. And this is why I can't be stopped. Do you read manga? I love the drawings from Berserk. I don't. I don't read manga. But it does sound like I need to... I guess I accidentally removed the note in the description that just says, yes, I've read Berserk. I think I might need to put that back. <laughs> I've seen a couple people mention it already. Eve always bringing the puns. I literally am scared of that hand and hoping your course teaches me to finally overcome the battle of shading. I've always hated it, excited and terrified at the same time. I've built it up step by little step. If anything's gonna help you overcome the fear of shading, it'll be my course. you do the exercises in order, you can't help but get better, you know? It ain't easy, you know? When you, when you attempt the sphere the first time, you'll be like, oh, crap. <laughs> Aren't I an artist? I thought I'd be better at the sphere. But once, I, once you see my demands and once you have a thorough explanation of all of the factors that I want in there, you'll see. It's serious. But the good thing is that even doing one sphere with full knowledge of what you need to get out of it, of the actual list of modeling factors and criteria that need to be there for it to feel real, for it to feel dimensional, um, just one attempt will make you better at drawing. You will be better at drawing. James has less background noise and less viewers. He has less background noise than me. Is his apartment, does he have central air? Or something like that? How'd he get central air conditioning in New York City? Freaking fan. I wonder what happens if I turn it off. Is it too hot? I wonder how hot it is right now. I'll last 20 seconds without my fan on. I'm very sensitive to heat, too. I'm a cold weather guy. It's 91 degrees right now. I don't think I can hack it without the fan.
Thank you, Mel. I'm glad that you like the course better than real food. It's excellent. Very good. Fiddle with the mic settings. I'm sure you can fix the background noise issue. You know, I've tried everything and um, I can actually get the background noise out with a noise gate, but with um, just the natural profile of my voice, in my current setup, the noise gate that I would need to get my fan noise out just, just clips the cicatives and the high end of my range. So it makes me sound a little weird. It starts cutting off uh, the very beginnings and ends of my words just because I have a very, I don't have a very deep voice. It's in the higher register and it comes out at a low pitch. So it ain't for me. I think it's just easier on everyone's ears if, because uh, I think you kind of filter out the constant hum, but uh, it just lets my voice sound normal instead of sounding digitized. You, you know you're surrounded by fans, like you're just in a big hug when everyone's like, we like the fan. <laughs> you're just like, uh, what else could you ask for to prove that you're just like in your own little bubble, right? That's funny. We think the fan's great. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Nick. Hands just take a long time. I might go for a meds map assignment and one of yours a day. Try for weekly personal pieces to see progress. Um, do I think it's too much? I mean, I don't know you, but I'd say for most people it'd be too much. Watch, uh, watch the first videos in my course. Watch, um, watch how to use this course and uh, listen to my argument that you really should insist on doing creative work as much as you're doing the exercises. I doubt, I don't think, I don't think personal pieces weekly is enough personally. Ahmed might disagree with me, but um, I just think people are, 
unbelievably hamstrung and held back by not developing the discipline of working on their art in the current era in the in the way that art gets talked about online these days i mean so many i mean god half the people in a place like my discord are utterly angsty about being unable to draw happily it's like it's just the result of never building the habit and the truth is that it's um it's not gritty to spend tons of time doing exercises we wish it was so that our dad would be proud of us right but it's just not the case man it doesn't make you a better artist it doesn't make you gritty it doesn't make you cool it needs to be done but it doesn't it doesn't matter if you're gritty for a month or even a year it's like the ability to do exercises is relevant on the timeline of years and if you, it's easy to fall back on exercises because they make you feel like this thing is really happening like you're doing something hard like you're very serious like oh you're working as hard as a doctor or something like that it's like don't kid yourself that's not how this works that's not how art works art is about fun so you i really don't think you should do that i really don't think you should do that and spend all your time doing exercises you are the harder thing is to not just take the schedule that somebody else is giving you perfectly laid out it's like why would that work for you you're an artist right you're supposed to be an individual um the harder thing is to continue to exercise your creativity day after day after day after day that's not easier i have to emphasize this again that's not easier than the nerd sitting over there who just exercises all day exercises all day no he's the one messing up it's harder to trust yourself and to be creative every day that's my personal opinion i i, I see almost no one suffer from that and i see tons of people suffer from getting start from getting stuck in the uh in the skill trap it's not like you don't want to practice your skills but you the hard thing is you need to you need to practice them with wisdom you got to do it right yeah mitchell you need we all it's part of our responsibility i think to ourselves to even if it's tough get very used to spending huge amounts of time on your work instead of what others have prescribed for you it's the only way 
Sam Lamb says, can you speak again, you've spoken on this in the past, on the notion of being at peace with art still being available to someone who can't devote full time to it? Bearing in mind that time is an illusion, yep. I'm mostly at peace with it, but would love to hear your wisdom about what it means for me to do art only when I get a chance, given the life I lead. Yeah, I, um, I think there's a tendency for a lot of artists and people trying to get into art to... Okay, here's the thing. Art is extremely emotional for most people, uh, I believe. It, for a lot of us, when we succeed at a drawing, when we have a good day at drawing, it feels like a peak experience. It feels incredibly powerful. Um, it can make our day, it can make our week. It's, for very few of us, is art a activity that has neutral energetics, right? Now, that doesn't mean it's always positive, it can be extremely negative. So art tends to have very positive energetics or very negative energetics. And because of that, we tend to react to that elevated emotionality by pumping up its place in our life and by making it feel more and more important, right? So because it has exaggerated energetics, it's more exciting than exercise or video games or doing chores or things like that. It's easy for us to react to that and say, all right, well, it's got to become a bigger, bigger and part of my life. It should be my job. I want it to be my job, things like that. The truth is that you don't know what you want. <laughs> you have no idea what you want. I mean, so many artists, they finally get the job and they're like, oh my God, this job sucks. I hate this job. It's just sapping my creativity. It's depressing me. I, w I wish I just had a regular job. Um, you don't know what you want. And I think that a lot of us, a lot of artists need to accept that wanting is cheap. You can wish whatever you want. It's, it's, it costs less than nothing to say, oh, I think I want art to be my job. It was that easy. It's just words. It's just thought formations. The idea that that would be true, it's very unlikely that it's true for you. Who knows? You know, it's very unlikely that you would enjoy doing it all the time, bending your whole life around it, going through the ups and the downs and the judgment and the disconnection from people and people not being able to relate to you and nobody believing your job is stable, everybody worrying about you constantly. It's very, very unlikely that you would actually like it. You don't have, no one really knows what they want because wanting is cheap. It just comes and goes like nothing, you know, it just pops up. So I think for a lot of people, and I just think this doesn't get said a lot, it's like you should take very seriously that doing art in your spare time, when it comes up, when you feel like it, when you have the time, might just be the best damn way to do it because feeling like crap while you make art, feeling depressed, feeling anxious, feeling like people are judging you, as far as I'm concerned, basically invalidates the entire endeavor, you know? It basically makes the whole thing fall apart. It's like, it's too challenging, it's too hard, it's too personal to do feeling negative about it, in my personal opinion. And if, if, if you have other things going on in your life, if you have something that can support you, if you have a normal job and benefits, it's like, if you're enjoying the time you spend drawing, I honestly think it's equal, it has equal value, whether it's an hour a month or 10 hours a day for the rest of your life. It's like, enjoyment is enjoyment. You know, happiness is happiness, joy is joy. Um, if you're a freak, right? You know, if you're a weirdo, I count myself amongst them and nothing else will do and you don't have a fallback, right? Like I've, I've made, uh, for all intents and purposes, I have made every dollar I've ever earned in my life off of art. <laughs> I, I, there's no fallback for me, there's nothing else. So we are in a different situation, right? And um, we've got to figure our stuff out with that being the case, but if that's not your situation, I think people need to take, take much more seriously the idea that maybe, maybe it's already as good as it gets, brother. You know, like I really, really mean that. I really mean that.
it's like drawing drawing doesn't feel better for me because it's my career than it did when it wasn't you know i'm lucky it was fun the whole time <laughs> you know but um i i feel exactly the I feel exactly the way I do now when I draw as I did when I was 16 thinking about it and 19 struggling with it um, or struggling to become a professional. It didn't change. It didn't get better because I did it as a job. I needed a way to make money and art was what I was good at. So it, it handled the like career worries of my life. But drawing, the, the experience of drawing always felt the same, and that is life-affirming. A number one, tops, spiritual. So if you can get there, I really don't think it matters what the context around it is. Happy to provide, Sam. These are very complicated questions, and a lot of people are going through them and grappling with them. Now I know for I know for everyone else listening, I know it gets much more complicated when you don't like your job. You know, Sam likes his job, <laughs> so that that changes things. I know it's much harder when you don't like your job, and art just feels incredible, and you just think about art all day at your job. I mean, trust me, I get you. I get you. I know that adds a complicating aspect for sure. But you know, it's like, it's not going to feel different when it becomes your job, you know? Your, your self, self-image self might feel different, but the act of making your art is not going to feel different. So, you know, if that's, a, if that's part of the considerations, you got to be real careful with that. Help the people, Falls. Help the people. Hands just take a long time. You guys probably didn't believe me. Either. You guys were like, Stephen won't spend a whole hour on just the hand. When he's rendering like whole halves of the picture in an hour. It's like, oh yeah, well. Hands need to scale the detail hierarchy of the picture correctly. So you just got to do them. You gotta show those hands the love they deserve. And again, every moment of drawing is an opportunity to practice your patience. Every moment that you don't freak out and leap out of your skin, is a little war one. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, the mere fact that we can make something out of nothing is love, baby. It's love. It's 
connecting with the core. It's a subtle reminder of what you really are. How have the workshops been going, Stephen? They went great. I did three. Three with uh, what I consider to be two classes each, so six. It's like I've run six workshops. And um, I had a blast doing them. I think they went really well. I learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot about me, about students. I learned a lot from the students. And I also learned a lot about what the workshop is, you know? I thought it was one thing when I started, and then the students showed me that it was something else, so I got a great education in it. The workshops were very good. I'm going to do just my course for a while. You know, the workshops almost, uh, the workshops really, well, this is a longer discussion about what I discovered they actually are, but um, I want to play on the skill side of things, so I'm doing that with my course. I see now that a pre-recorded, carefully constructed um, coursework like that is the best way to teach skills. So I'm going to do just that for a while. Get used to the, you know, I'm giving feedback on everything in the course right now, so it's a big responsibility. So I'm getting my grips on that. And then um, at some point, I'm going to go back and restructure workshop with everything that I've learned. Maybe make a little bit, um, some pre-packaged, pre-recorded, pre-written content for it now that I get what it is. And then look at uh, re-evaluating the length. Um, how I present the way it's structured. I got a lot of ideas. But I don't know when I'm going to do that. Got to think. Because now I get that workshop is really like a like an art direction workshop. It's where I teach people who don't have exposure to art schools and things like that how to art direct yourself and how to think like a a designer and how to crit yourself and things like that. And um, yeah, I want to shore that up.
Bye, Chuck. All right, I think we can leave that there for now. So now when we zoom out, and it'll scale the picture really nice to have all of that careful, thoughtful detail grouped over there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, very nice. Shape hierarchy nice and controlled there, like that. huge Stephen by analogy when I got back into rock climbing my motor skills were rusty but my technique was not a ladder is harder to lose yeah I mean I took I took two months off of drawing basically about two months off of drawing to uh, edit my course and um, I don't know snap right back into it I didn't feel particularly rusty <laughs> from um, from taking two months off <laughs> that figure is your type? Mine too. I think I'm getting a little overexposed here. Yeah, that's more what the drawing looks like. It's just about done. You know, I wasn't planning on taking this one like all the way and just sort of, and I riffed it. So I think it's pretty close. It's like, it's at the level right now where if I just end it just about here, just clean up a few things, it'll read as done. But then if I begin taking it to the next level, wherever I would start doing that, it will throw off the composition and the shape hierarchy and the detail hierarchy and once i begin that process in order to get to another stage where it will feel finished it will you know add another 10 or so hours or something like that so i kind of need to either choose to leave it here for now which i think is what i'm going to do um or i need to commit to pushing it through to the other side Drink of water. How long we've been live? Three hours and 46 minutes of joyful drawing, my friends. I'm gonna keep going. Getting a little hungry for lunch, but still wanna draw. So what are the big things I need to do? Need to differentiate this form shadow and this cast shadow. I think that'll help it feel done. Um, should I use the 14B for this? Eh, maybe not. It might be. I think I could do it with the HB. What is next for a drawing like this once completed? Do you make prints, post around the social, sell, or is it just for you? Yeah, I mean, I share it. You know, I don't sell my originals these days. I never got into that.
I don't sell prints of all of them. I sell prints of the ones people like really, really like or ask for, things like that. Prints aren't really a, I don't know. For me, prints aren't really a big seller, so I don't worry about them. Most of the prints you find in my print store for real, they're there because one person messaged me saying, hey, I really want a print of that one. And I'm like, sure. And I just put it up basically for them. <laughs> and then I just leave it up. Prints are not really um, for my market, you know, because I don't really go to conventions. You know, I don't, I don't sell in person. Uh, prints just aren't really a big priority, you know. I'm happy to provide them because it's, it's easy enough for me to provide them for the people who just happen to want one, but it's not really um, a priority for me and it's not, it's not a significant portion of my finances at all. don't like that I'm going to redesign that let's make it bigger and let's give it more of a sweep It was just really shaping up to be the kind of cast shadow a coward would draw. I'm not a coward. Can't we get your high-res scans on Patreon too? Yep. I like to put nice big scans on Patreon for the ultra fans to check everything out in the highest of resolutions. Jeez, Mitchell's working construction in 104 degree weather. Bless up, Mitchell. Stay hydrated, man. Holy crap. feel like my access to impassioned and joyful creation is gated by reaching created crisis. Never the carrot, always the stick. I'm curious if you have insight into this rhythm. I know what you're talking about. Um, you need to change that. That's not sustainable. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work out. It'll push you the way of Van Gogh. Um, you gotta, you need to find a way to turn it around. The problem is that everyone needs to turn it around to, their own way, you know, they need to transform it in a way that's particular to them. But um, the insight that I have in that is that, on that is that you should find it unacceptable. You can't, if you're, 
Like I said before, the energetics of art making are extremely strong. So it will be the most important part of your life if you do art significantly for a significant portion of your life. Um, and if it's tied to crisis, you will produce crisis after crisis after crisis and it'll kill you. Don't let it happen. Regret using that 14B there. I regret using that 14B because I have this smudge, but um, I'm proud of myself for changing something that I was dissatisfied with. You gotta be willing to kill your darlings. You gotta risk it all. You've got to risk it. I think I can turn that into a soft roll on a ha on a dark half tone though, so should be all right. How long did this take? Uh, let's see, four hours here, three hours yesterday. Is that seven? Maybe we're at like. Uh, if you factor out me talking, it's probably like seven-ish hours of work right now but good work like it'd be easy to say seven hours of work so like a day's work it's like eh, i wouldn't have been able to do this if i tried to push through for seven hours it's seven quality hours of happy drawing You made really solid progress today, thank you. It's probably about the point that I'll call it done, you know. I just started it to like, ooh, uh, I have the time to do a nice little pencil drawing again. So I don't feel the need to push it into like 100 hour territory. I save that for the ones that I plan a little bit more carefully, you know. I think the more spontaneous ones like this one, it's nice to leave them looking a little spontaneous. <laughs> have a little bit of their starting character in there.
I'm back and Mr. Zapata is still alive, your true love drawing? Hell yeah, man. It's only, it's only, it's only food that drives me away from this table, man. I'm definitely on the side of things where it's like I gotta remind myself to eat. I spend most of my time lost in this stuff. I really admire how joyful you are about art making. It's easy to forget that this is supposed to be fun when you're hyper focused on improvement and skill. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Big, 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 sharp exclamation point on that. Don't let the lamos out there and the, the suits who control everything try to hypnotize you into thinking that it's just about what company you work for and the value you can provide for them and are you skilled because they're just going to use your skill to benefit them, right? They're still never going to pay you as much as your skill is worth because capitalism. It's like just it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. Fun first and foremost. Everything else will follow. If you're having fun, like me, nothing can stop you. <laughs> It'll be easy to practice. You become skillful because you genuinely, you're genuinely connected with what you're doing. You'll keep jobs because you're not stressed out. You know, you're having a good time. So more creative ideas will flow. People will see that you're happy. So they'll want to give you promotions and have you lead teams and stuff like that. Everything flows from the fun. <laughs> Leave it to Ahmed to show up when uh, someone's demanding paper. Bless you, buddy. James was laying down some mad Zapata slander. Oh, I bet. I bet. But as usual, slander hurled at me only slanders yourself. Anyone with a lick of sense can see who's on the right side of history with any foul words tossed in my direction. They may pay lip service to the angry person, but they look at the work and they know. They know who's right. They know who's right. James is just mad because he texted me while I was already live and said, hey, come on my stream. And I was like, I'm streaming right now. I'll see if you're still on when I get off of my stream. He was like, how dare you not abandon your stream?
<laughs> Sloppy seconds on it. Oh my god, I shouldn't have even said anything. Med, the problem, the problem with, with you, me, the problem with you, me, and James is that the three of us are just barely containing how much we hate each other. We've just got like this, this very thin layer of friendship with this thick mass of animosity underneath it. And anything could puncture the thin layer of friendship and just let the black tar of our hatred for each other just spill out any second. <laughs> it's always sitting right there. How do how do to how go how do go to the cool kids parties at LBX this year? Med's definitely going to Lightbox, right? I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go. I'm pretty sure. I haven't bought my tickets yet, but I think I will be there. I've got a couple little things I gotta figure out first. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I'll go. I thought you were locked in, Med. Am I just making this up? I thought you already had tickets. I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering that. just fun to do something. Alright, so that dark, that shadow is noticeably darker than the other one now, so that feels like a form shadow, that feels like a cast shadow. Feels like it could get this value could spread a little more. Careful not to make my hatch marks too noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else is bothering me? I think I might leave it here for today. Steven, what should I draw? Um, it's a raccoon, but also a Lamborghini Diablo. But also, it's made out of forest material, not tree bark, not leaves. It's made out of an entire forest, like an entire Amazon rainforest. So it's a raccoon that is a Lamborghini Diablo in the material of an entire Amazon rainforest. Full color. 
realistic stuff. Thank you, Med. Yeah, that's a good point. Lightbox is in October. It'll be a nice, nice break into that. Oh, temperate Pasadena weather. Do you think LA's bad right now, Med? It must be really hot over there. Med and I used to abandon our rooms and go sleep in the living room when we lived together back in LA and it was really hot. It was the only way. So technically, 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 I mean, if we're getting super technical, like really technical, Ahmed and I have slept together. doing a little reflected light work in these shadows because this got a little flat through here. A little flat. Amazing work. Thank you, Rana. Bye, Med. Enjoy your lunch. I'll talk to you soon, man. I'm just going to start calling you on the phone when I'm on these streams like, a, like it's one of those comedian podcasts or something like that. I'm just going to let you come in all grainy through the speaker. See how that literally just like those, <laughs> uh, I, I did like two seconds of work on these little value changes in the shadow. You can see how much dimensionality they add. Really does a lot. Modeling factors, value hierarchy, et cetera, et cetera. Also, that's the reason to have some ability to flat a shadow. Because if you don't make the shadow flat enough, it's there's too much noise everywhere. So a little patch like that or like that doesn't pop off, doesn't do anything. How long will you draw for? Well, I've been drawing for four hours and 15 minutes, four hours and 13 minutes. It's just, you know, feels like two seconds, honestly. But um, I have a hard out at two. I've got to get out of two, so I can't go longer than a, another 50 minutes. I was going to do another drawing. I was going to switch and do a, a design sketch for something I thought of the other day, but uh, I got kind of sucked into this. Yeah, I got a hard out at two. I got to run. I thought I was going to go until like four today. And then I forgot about my two. It's therapy. I have therapy, right? A, there's nothing shameful about it. 
I've got therapy at two, so uh, I gotta go do that. But I thought I was gonna go for like six hours today or something like that, and then I looked at my calendar, I was like, oh, that's right, I got therapy. So that'll be my out. Glad you like it, Godot. Saw something flicker up over there. God, it feels good to sketch on paper again and all that. Sometimes you gotta make a really big drawing course, but uh, I sure miss drawing. Drawing really keeps me sane and happy and uh, is my heart, so. You know, sometimes you just got so much stuff to edit and to carefully craft that uh, you just can't fit anything else in your life for a couple months. But um, damn, it feels good to be back. Form is an illusion, and illusion is form. Bye, Madhav. Where did you learn your techniques or way of shading? It's a combination of many, many, many things that I've learned. I've pieced this together from all sorts of ideas, concepts, sources. Many of these things, many of these concepts, the places that I took them from, like particular schools or books or educational pedagogies, they insisted that they were mutually exclusive, that they couldn't be blended. I blended them. <laughs> Believe nothing. You can achieve anything in art. I saw their insistence that these things couldn't coincide merely as a lack of imagination. So last question then, I still have to do your Gumroad tutorials. They still worth it or just do the full course? I mean, I mean, my Gumroad tutorials are good, but I've never worked as hard on anything as I did on the course. I mean, the course is the, course is the best thing I've ever made, <laughs> period, probably. Um, it's harder than, it was harder to do than any job. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just, it blows anything it blows the Gumroad tutorials out of the water. I mean, it's just, it's of a different order. It's a, di it's a, they really can't be compared, you know. It's just a much more involved, much more rigorous enterprise, you know. And my Gumroad tutorials are on pretty focused, small things. And uh, the course is like a deep dive into form at large, which is a very large topic, very large topic. Recording aside, how long did it take to make the script and gather the contents you wanted in the course, Steven? So long, <laughs> so long. Um, I wrote out the outline first, you know, like designed the curriculum. Then I, um, and that is like, you know, a whole involved process. Then I did the demos. Um, I did them all as a group first so that I didn't write the scripts before I did the demos. I just did the demos so that I remembered everything that I actually need to do to execute the demos and then, and I recorded every minute of drawing the demos for the most part, then I went back and watched 
all of the recordings of the demos and I timestamped all of the important moments. And then I wrote the scripts to the timestamps. Um, it took ridiculously long. I mean, a very long time. I mean, just writing the scripts must have been eight to 10 hours a day of work every day for over a month, just the writing of the scripts. Because I didn't want to, well, Nick, you've tried the course. It's, there's no hemming and hawing. I'm on script the whole time. So it's, ex it's exactly what I want to say every second of the videos, you know? And then like usual with anything that needs editing, editing took longer than everything else. At least when I edited, I already had the scripts with the timestamps, so I knew where I was cutting to, what the important moments were. The audio wasn't sloppy because it was all recorded on script. I heard rain. No, that's not right. No rain. How do you plan your drawings? Did not uh did not plan this one. Just rift it. Usually when I plan, I plan them um, with little thumbnails in my sketchbook and then I do digital, digital designs so that I have a lot of flexibility. And I try to plan them lightly. I do something called soft planning. Uh, I don't plan them well. I purposefully don't plan them well. I don't want a lot of information in the plan. That way it's still exciting when I go and draw them. And that lets me spend a long time on them, even though they're planned. It makes for very pleasant and easy listening, paid off really, thank you, Nick. I mean, it was, that's what I was going for. I knew it was a huge time investment up front, but um, yeah, I there's definitely a place for real time. Real time is useful, um, but I do this, you know, I do these streams. There's a bunch of me streaming. I was planning on continuing to stream. So I knew like people can already, the good thing about real time is that people see how long stuff actually takes. So when I started working on the course, I was like, people can already see that with the streams. And I even have some videos purposely, purposefully for teaching that lesson. I've got one on here where I just draw in my sketchbook in real time for eight hours. Another one that's like two hours of real-time drawing of like a demon. So I was like, I already taught that stuff. So that part's kind of handled. Um, when you trim it down and you don't hem and haw, right? And you're just on script, saves a lot of time. It really makes something like a course much more focused. I, um, I used to have more patience for that stuff back when I was young. But these days, like, yeah, it's just, it's hard. You know, a lot of, with a lot of real-time stuff, it's like, Unless you got a lot of a lot of coffee in you, it's a long watch, you know. And our attention spans are going down. So thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. It was um, it was a hard choice on my part, but I was like, we're doing it on script. We're doing it focused. We're doing it trimmed down. And uh, the fact that it's reading that way for you and it feels like easy listening. Also, I tried to keep the videos relatively tight. You know, most of the lessons are ten-ish minutes. Right, and then there's ones that tend to get longer, but most don't go longer than 20 min minutes of like raw content. So, wanted it real tight, easy to focus on, really dense. You know, it came out really dense. It's like really focused information. And that was my goal. Thank you, Rana. 
I'm glad you like the ad. Enjoy your dinner, Nick. Take care, friend. Hello, Stephen. I decided to take this year and focus on design type learning for my beginner project. Nice. If you have, if you had to advise me to choose between your workshop or your course, what would it be? If you are specifically doing a year on design type learning for beginner projects, I would advise my workshop. It's specifically about like, now that I understand that I know it's really like an art direction workshop, but um, unfortunately I can't, I, I can't help you beyond that because uh, I don't have plans to run another workshop right now. I don't know when I would do it or anything like that. So, but um, hypothetically, if there were one around, yeah, I would advise the workshop. But I think what you're doing, whether you have guidance or not, is super healthy. It's a very good thing to do, to um, do your, do a, go for the project and to design it and to art direct yourself. It keep, it looks like it's threatening to rain outside, but my phone says I'm crazy. But it's so dark outside my window right now. And I keep hearing rumblings like thunder. I don't know, man. Hi, Steven. Could you show us how to do an arm? Nice art, by the way, dude. Ah, uh, unfortunately, that's too big a task to do in, a, in the time that I have left here. That's a really big, uh, oh God, who's buzzing my apartment? Give me one second. It's all good. It's just the Amazon guy trying to get into the complex. Yeah, modern day James showed up. He's got a knife. This is it for me, folks. James is way more fit than me, so it ain't going to go down the Stephen way. I mean, he's wily, that one. I'll be dead in seconds. Dark accents, man. So important to know how to control your dark accents. Do you use references? Uh, I used a reference on that hand, but everything else is out of my head. But I sketched the position of the hand out of my head first, and then I looked at the reference for uh, in the middle of the process, and then I put the reference, and then I put the reference away, and I finished it from my imagination to help unify it with the rest of the picture. If it makes sense to use reference for something, I will use it. I don't draw from imagination for its own sake. I draw from imagination because there's no references for most of the stuff I want to draw. You know, I want to draw weird stuff.
And then if I have something that it would be easy to get a reference for it, AKA this hand, I'll get the reference. What's the issue? If I want something to look especially crazy, like, like for example, you could say like, oh, well, you could have got a reference for the arm, right? Why do that for imagination? It's like, cause I wanted the arm to look wild. You know, I wanted the arm to look like really crazy. And um, it would just be, if that's the goal that I'm going for, if I want it to look strange and aberrant, then um, it's usually easier for me to get that from my head than while being held back by a reference. Patrons, I think this one is probably done. Maybe I'll sit on it for a day just to see if I want to do any final touches after sleeping on it. But um, I'll, uh, I'll post a high res scan on the Patreon either today or tomorrow probably. If you ever drop your design course, would that ever make your workshop obsolete? No, because my design course would be the, the raw info dump. The workshop is about getting feedback on your actual project. That can't be replaced because, well, it can't be replaced by anything pre-recorded, right? Because just by definition, I get, how can you pre-record when you don't know what people's, uh, people's projects are? The workshop is about giving, giving feedback and giving accessibility to the art direction mindset for your particular project. It's less about me um, downloading skill information or anything like that. You know, most people are, you know, they don't know how to work on their comic book, their design portfolio, their particular story and things like that. They just don't know how to do that. So the workshop is really about teaching them how to do that. And that requires that there be feedback on their projects. And uh, a lot of the workshop is me taking the time to learn about their project. You know, I read people's scripts and things like that. It's very involved, very, very involved. People who've taken the workshop will tell you. How long did this one take you? Looks like we came in seven-ish hours, somewhere under eight. The stream saw most of it happen, so I don't know. I think they would agree. It's been, we've been live for four and a half hours today. Okay, that's definitely, yeah, it's reading. Yeah, it's reading. We've been live for four and a half hours today. I did it for about three hours yesterday. I started it in maybe a quick one hour sketch off camera the day before that. Um, but you know, I mess around on stream, not drawing the whole time because I'm talking, answering questions and stuff. It's probably seven-ish hours. Which is pretty fast. I mean, pretty fast for me. It went by quick. I'm pleased, you know. Especially having not drawn a pencil drawing for a couple months while I edited my course. It's fun to get a good one quick at the first blush. 
after two months off. Size of paper, it's 14 by 17 inches. I don't know what that is in the other measurements, the, the A measurements, I don't know what it is. Oh man, this rain could be great. It could uh, break the humidity unexpectedly. That'd be awesome. Just little touches. The smallest of things left on this guy. Looks amazing, Steven. Thanks, guys. I mean, it's very kind. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm very lucky. I feel very lucky that, uh, you know, I can just basically sit here and have fun and people will be like, looks great. It's like, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. No problem, Ayub. I'm happy to be live. Thanks, you guys, for being here. You know, you don't have to thank me. It's fun for me to have company and to uh, be able to chat while uh, I draw. Yeah, I got you to thank. Thanks for being here. Hi, puppy. How you doing? Oh, I know the thunder is very scary. I know it's very scary. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, you're hungry. I didn't give you your coogie. Come on, get your coogie. Oh, I'm hungry too. I just love drawing. You know that. Who's got time to eat when you gotta draw? Sit. Sit pretty. Good girl. Touch. Touch. Good girl. Sit. Down. Play dead. Good girl. Paw. Spin. There you go. <laughs> Oof. Now go for my water bottle. She gets so hungry. Nobody knows how hungry she gets. All right, what well, little things can I do before I wrap up here? I was supposed to go to something tonight and it got canceled. So who knows? I still have my heart out in a few minutes here but um maybe i'll come back on later because i still you know <laughs> i just draw all day um i still uh i still want to do that sketch for that other thing i had thought of um so maybe after i eat have therapy um do a couple chores maybe i'll come back stream again later and uh do that sketch Spin this mofo. Yeah, she knocked over my water bottle with her spin. Hey, Steven, how long since you've taken your last freelance work? Oof. <laughs> um, I haven't done it all year. Spent, uh, I've been giving them all away. Um, I've been having offers come in, but, um, you know, I just like doing this. So I've been giving giving the gigs to students and stuff like that trying to get people started it's more fun giving people their first job than it is doing the job for me so i've um, been doing that 
And when, when I worked on my course, I really saw with, with how much I wanted to do with my course. I was like, I really need to do just this. You know, I'm not a good multitasker. I bet you guys can tell from what I talk about here on the YouTube channel and on the streams. It's like, I like to be completely focused on something. I'm a deep work kind of a guy. So um, I didn't want to have my schedule constantly being edited by just gigs that come up, you know? So I just committed myself to, I'm just only working on the course for months, which I can do because, you know, I trust myself. I know I'm very disciplined. I know I'm very, um, if I say I'm just going to do that every day for months, I know I'll do it, you know? So I kind of committed when I launched in on the course in January that I'm just doing that for a long time, which is, you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky that I have the, um, I'm lucky that I get to do that. Not a lot of people have that kind of flexibility, you know? It's also from like, you know, saving up money and um, living below my means and things like that. You know, it's not like I haven't done stuff to allow me that flexibility. Also having other income streams and things like that. But yeah. So long answer short, I haven't done it all year. I haven't taken any gigs all year. A river onto his people. Is that a Will Smith joke, Joe? <laughs> this stream got 300 likes. Is that a lot? <laughs> I do appreciate all of you who are like, hey, guys, like the stream. But man, I suck at the I'm really not that great at the online stuff. I never I never think about the likes or anything like that. I'm one of those bohemian losers. I'm like, if the drawings are real good and we're honest and we have fun. People will, the rest will handle itself, which is perhaps naive, but that's me. Also, like, drawing's hard enough, you know, I don't have a lot of extra mental energy to, um, not hard, but it demands, it doesn't even demand, it's just like, I want to give all my focus to it, so I don't have a lot of spare energy to give to worrying about the likes and all that. But thanks for giving them, thanks for hitting 300 likes, stream. Stream team, stream of Palooza. Oh wait, the rain's coming down. Can you hear that? That's nice. What a romanticist. I I try to pick my battles. That's how I think of it. I think in other areas I'm very shrewd with marketing, but um, I try to pick my battles. I don't need to do everything. I don't need to be shrewd everywhere. What are your main influences in subject matter and technique? Oof, too long to too long to list. I mean, a gigantic, gigantic list. That would be a very, very long list of names. Some uh, some of the stuff that's usually at the top of my head is um, Frank Frazetta, of course, John Singer Sargent. Um, for drawings like this, um, 
Ernst Fuchs, Frank Frazetta again, um, Marco Djurjevic, West Burke, West Burke, <coughs> West Burt, uh, Mike Buttkiss, Dave Raposa. Uh, I mean, the list is so long, and it'd be different tomorrow, you know? It's a very, very long list. Who else? Um, I'm just thinking for drawings like this, you know, because I have different influences for different things that I do. Um, Carlos Fuente, Geo Napkill is a big inspiration for me. I often find myself when I'm drawing, I'm just like, just try to draw the way Geo sculpts, you know. Um, I often forget my closest friends, actually, sometimes. Ahmed al always a has always been a big inspiration for me. Not for the rendering part, but... Um, um, I mean, he can render, of course, but the, he doesn't really do it that much. His, his big thing is the quality of the, the initial sketch, how vibrant and exciting the line work can be. Um, I don't think I've ever quite gotten there. I mean, he's got a kind of a kind of dare to care that you almost can't, that you really can't fake. But um, he's, he was always greatly inspirational to me for that. And a direct teacher for that. You know, when we were in school back then, he was, he was one of the people who told me most uh, vociferously, like, um, you got to loosen up, man. You know, you got to just let it fly and not worry so much. You know, it's either exciting or it isn't. You know, Ahmed was one of the best people at communicating that. Yeah, the list of my influences is too long. Eclectic, I would say. Uh, very uh, influenced by many things. Subject matter is mostly um, mythology, mysticism, um, philosophy, my own anxious ruminations on mortality, mystical experience, meditative experiences. Really nothing inspires me more than just doing it. The most inspirational thing for me is the joy of drawing. Everything else kind of flows from that. For me, the idea of like, what are, you, what are your influences or something like that? It's like saying like, you know, what are your influences for like how you ride a bicycle? It's like, it's not about that. It's just fun to ride, you know? Do you think of your creatures as characters with story and background or just like to create them as individual drawings? Uh, when I do them, they're just individual drawings. When, uh, but they often, 
after I've made them, I do often have some sort of feeling of quote unquote what they are. Or later when I go into storytelling mode, if I try to like write something or, um, or I have an idea for a story, a lot of the times when the story comes to me, I'll be visualizing it and I'll be like, huh, actually that thing that I drew the other day would kind of be perfect for that. So it's almost like it goes in reverse order for me. It's like the drawing comes first and I'm just like, who knows what the hell it is. And then I'll come up with a story later that I think is separate and then it'll turn out the drawing kind of fits right into it. So it's all kind of backwards for me. All right, everyone, I'm gonna get going here soon. I'm gonna stay on for a couple more minutes, but I wanna go eat some lunch before my call. I'm going for four hours and 50 minutes. We're just about done with this guy. It could be done now. I'm just noodling things, fixing little value situations. If anyone has any last questions or anything like that. You get the course, etc., etc. Hey, Steven, when you get to, to your designing course, would you bless us with transformational costume and transformational color? Well, they wouldn't be, um, they wouldn't be bonuses. Those will just be, those topics would be covered in, uh, in the design course, you know? The design course would definitely look at um, design in terms of clothing and creating characters and... Um, and co color as well. A couple little pock marks just for texture. And we're so subtle. Little things, I mean little nothings, just little, barely a couple strokes of graphite just to create little blisters and moles and things like that. Always fun. Sometimes just make them react to the texture that's already there from the rendering. Like when monsters have flesh and fatty parts and freckles and you know you know the stuff that's like actually on skin the stuff we're familiar with also you know monsters should have fat you know they should there should be some it shouldn't all be ripped you know there should be should feel like flesh a little bit of flesh should be you're free to make weird configurations and things like that shouldn't be all hard everywhere And for the love of God, monsters shouldn't... Why is the starting point for monsters that they be skinny? Like, does anyone... Sometimes you draw monsters like this, and people are like, wow, it's surprising that it's muscular. It's like, why? It's like... You have any idea how bodies work? Like, if it's supposed to be threatening, if it's supposed to actually be strong, it's going to be huge. You know, <laughs> if a, a monster that's a skeleton, it's like, it looks creepy, but... How does it work? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pushover, you know? It simply, it's not how physics works. It's not how reality works. And does my monster have access to a, a full gym and P90X? Yeah, yeah, he does, you know? 
He's got the mass, but he's also, you know, he's watching his diet. He's got the definition. He understands that abs are made in the kitchen. It's that simple. But he skips leg day. Just, everybody's been making that joke. I just want to remind, just, have you seen a horse? Have you ever seen a horse in your life? <laughs> like, guys. I mean, guys, just look at a horse. Smaller legs are just supporting his one true leg. going to beat it. I'm running out of time here. I could push it. I could noodle it forever. All right, I'm just leaving it there. There's that. I'll pull the tape later. Well, I'll let it sit for a day before I scan it. If I want to. Maybe I'll get impatient and just scan it, but I'll pull the tape and then I'll scan it. All right, my peoples. Oh my god, it is pissing rain outside. Wow, it is really coming down. That's funny. Since I had just checked the weather and it was like, no chance of rain. These weathermen have no idea. <coughs> do you ever get the itch to draw other subject matter? Do you do landscapes, portraits? I've done everything. I mean, for work, I mostly do landscapes. I mostly do. It's funny because you guys just, you know, I can't share NDA work, but it's like, I've done thousands of drawings that are just like really tight refined line drawings of environmental designs of architectural designs restaurants pavilions um theme park lands uh just stuff you guys have never seen like i, I do i've done so many of those you know for work like i do all sorts of stuff it's just that this is you know this is what i do here on the internet i've done everything i mean i've done there's really nothing I haven't tried. You know, I've drawn, I've drawn from res reference, from imagination. I've done people, animals, environments, landscapes, monsters, uh, narrative pieces, history pieces, design drawings, illustrations, storyboards, um, everything. I've drawn cars, I've drawn robots, I've drawn, and not just one-off, like, you know, extended relationships with all of those subject matters. I've done all sorts of stuff. Thanks, Ayub. <laughs> Bye, Godot. You beat me to it. You're leaving first. Cars, yeah, I'm drawing cars. 
Is Marvel just loose on NDAs? I see so much Marvel concept pre-production on Instagram. For their movies, they're not loose on NDA. Uh, for their movies, they're they're um, as aggress aggressive as anybody. But for their comic stuff, they there's really they let people share a lot because uh, it's just promotion for the comics. Like, and it's on such a tight turnaround. Like, what do they care? What do they really care that you saw Venom? two weeks before Venom is available on the cover of this cover book. Because it's like, the turnarounds are like that for comics. So they're not really, they don't really, they don't seem to care about that at all. And it just promotes it, you know? The artist says, well, cover for, you know, Venom 6 or whatever. And people are like, oh, Venom 6 is coming out. It's just free promotion for them. And what's the big deal? It's just, uh, it's just, it's going to be out in a week anyway, you know, from billing it to the artist to it being done but if you notice if you follow those people when there's like a secret in the cover when there's like a plot thing suddenly it's all under wraps then they tell them very pointedly like don't you dare share this <laughs> you know How long does it take for you to do a project for a theme park on average? Depends how long the company is like on board. Depends if you only do the concept, right? If you only do the initial idea, which might be, you know, cup anywhere from a couple weeks to a few months. Um, or if you go all the way through, if the theme park gets built, in which case years, it could be years on a project like that. I worked, uh, when I did uh, Warner Brothers World in Abu Dhabi, we worked on that for years, years, you know, on and off, but a lot of big, big sections of time spent working on that because it went all the way, you know, it's the biggest indoor theme park in the world. Have you done any painting or sculpture? Yep. Lots of painting. Have sculpted. D I've done sculpted both traditional and 3D, 3D modeling programs. All sorts of stuff. Bye bye, Arctic Monkey. Oh man, I gotta run. I'm not giving myself any time to eat lunch. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. I might be on later. Um, and if not, then I'll be back probably tomorrow. I mean, just draw, draw, draw. Am I right? Was it a fun job? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, it's really rigorous because you're designing stuff that's going to be real. But um, it is a fun job, you know. The rigorous parts can get annoying, you know, but there's also a lot of fun in there. Good job. Bye, everybody. Knock them dead today. Good luck with your drawing if you're drawn. And uh, you get the course. You get the course. You get the course. I mean, you get it.